All right, welcome to today's lesson on computer software. Today we're going to be looking at the three general categorizations of software. That's applications, programming software, and system software. The first category we have is application software, and it's a very broad category. Essentially, it's any kind of software that's designed to help you get a very specific task done. So there's several examples we could have of this. It could be word processing, like Microsoft Word. It could be an internet provider. It could be uh, Windows Media Player or Minecraft, any kind of game. There's a variety of different things that we could have to categorize it as application software. Basically, the specific things we want to do are creating text documents, browsing the internet, sending and receiving email, playing games, playing music, playing videos. Most programs that you are going to use on a computer will fall into the application software category. Consider smartphones where you have a quote, there's an app for that. Well, all those little apps that you'd have on your phone or on your iPad, those are all going to be examples of application software. It's a program allowing you to get a specific kind of task done. The second major category we had was programming software. And this is software that we've used in this class so far, like Alice, that is designed to help developers create, debug, maintain, or otherwise support programs and applications. So this is where I'm going to actually create Microsoft Word, or I'm going to use this program to create Minecraft and edit it and update it and so on. Usually when you have programming software, it's called an Integrated Development Environment, or an IDE for short. This is a specific type of program that is going to allow me to edit and write my codes, run them through a compiler so that they can be translated into a language that the computer understands, and then from that build an application and run it through a debugger as well, so I can test it and make sure that it functions properly. Some examples of IDEs would be Alice, which we've used, Dr. Java, which you will use in grade 11 and grade 12, Eclipse, which is another Java IDE, and Microsoft Visual Studio allowing you to do things like Visual Basic. In programming software, we also have smaller programs called a compiler and a debugger. A compiler is a specific program that translates human readable code into machine readable code. And again, sometimes this particular program can be combined as part of an IDE. So I can write my code and compile it in one location. And similarly with a debugger, much like a compiler, it's often part of, a, of an IDE. A debugger itself is a program that runs a given program one line at a time so I can examine what's happening on at that particular line of code and make any changes I want. So this debugger is going to help me to find either syntax or runtime errors, logic errors. The third type of software we're going to talk about is systems software. And this is software that is designed to operate and control the computer hardware. So this is a program that's going to allow me to make my keyboard function properly, or my mouse, or my monitor. Okay? System software includes the programs and files that make up a computer's operating system. And an operating system is any software that communicates with the computer hardware and allows other programs to run. So it's kind of like the brain of the computer that's going to make sure that everything is interacting properly. There are several functions that system software can do. Number one, they're going to control input and output that happens in a computer. It's going to allocate system resources, making sure that everything is going to be run so that I'm dividing my time between uh, printing a document and um, surfing the internet and typing something into the computer. So everything is going to be run efficiently. It also tries to make sure that we have enough memory so that all my programs can be stored at the same time. System software will allow me to manage storage and information retrieval. It allows me to maintain computer security, so uh, all of my antivirus things would be example of system software. And I can detect when there's a computer hardware failure, so whenever my hardware is not working, I can have system software that shows me how to make sure that I can connect it properly. There are several example programs that we could have. Some of them are operating systems like Windows and Linux. You also have your BIOS or your basic input-output system. This is the program that runs when your computer initially starts up. So this program would be responsible for loading your operating system and getting your oper operating system running. It's more of a low-level language. And then there's the disk operating system or DOS, which is often what's run in the background of something like Windows. Um, it allows you to have line-by-line -line command of running programs and so on. And the last thing we need to talk about with software is the different levels of software. Software is considered to be broken into either low level 
or high level. Something that's low level means that it runs where the computer understands it. It's very, very simplistic, basic code that the computer can understand. Very difficult for the majority of people to try and understand what's happening there. And then application programming so software is much higher level, meaning that the average typical user can use this particular type of software. So anybody can use it. It's very simple, straightforward. So unlike application software and programming software, system software is not intended to be run by the human user. So again, system software is very low level. Applications and programming software are higher level. That's it. That's all we have for today. We'll see you in class tomorrow where we can talk about what we've learned.